Thank you. I will call this regularly scheduled meeting of Bridgewater Town Council to order uh, and just remind people that the town of Bridgewater is located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, and we are very fortunate to be here. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, motion to approve the agenda as circulated. Councilor Fragier, seconded by Councilor Conklin. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The agenda has been approved. Um, in terms of announcements, we have a proclamation that will be posted on the town's website and on social media. Um, that February, a very important month, is internationally recognized as African Heritage Month, um, a time to recognize and salute the many contributions and ongoing achievements of people of African descent all over the world. And again, as uh, as proclamations are now posted um, on our social media feeds and website, that will happen as well. Are there any other announcements uh, from members of town council? And that's a quiet. By times, not a lot going on. Uh, I was uh, very pleased and 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 uh, humbled to be able to be part of the uh, transfer of the keys and the ownership um, of our uh, one of our surplus fire vehicles to Hebs Cross. As we know, um, it no longer was required for service for the town of Bridgewater, but uh, something that uh, has value well beyond its, its price. For Hebs Cross, and so we're thrilled that that vehicle can have a little bit more life in it for for that community. And uh, if we need it for mutual aid calls, we know it'll be here. And uh, thank you for Councillor Thorburn came as well. So it was it was great to uh, to be part of that. Now I'll turn it over to the CAO to go through introduction of new staff, some who are not actually that new. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, uh, we have a, a number of six staff, actually, that we'd like to introduce to Council tonight. A few of them have been here for a while, but with COVID, uh, it was just difficult to get them to be able to meet Council in person. So we decided we'll do the virtual option for everyone. So we have um, Museum Finance, Energized Bridgewater and Community Development represented here tonight with new staff members. So I think every... Um, Let's see, Lynette's here, I believe, and she can introduce uh, Rebecca first. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so Rebecca Bacharax is um, our museum and community navigator. She grew up in Ontario, but she has very deep roots in Nova Scotia. She's actually living on the South Shore in her, what was once her great, great grandparents' house. Um, and uh, she uh, has a wonderfully rich background um, in administrative roles. She was working with um, St. Mary's University and most recently Dalhousie. Right now, she has almost completed her master's degree in art education and she'll be defending her thesis in February. Um, so we're very happy that she's made the decision to reallocate to the South Shore. She's been living here since 2020, um, and we hope that you'll welcome her. Yeah. Yes, welcome, Rebecca. We're glad to have you. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's been a very warm welcome so far. Great. Well, you'll be a great addition to the team. Thank you. Good. So Don, uh, Don, I was going to say, Kim's here to introduce Don and Angela. So well, I, yeah, they are. Hi, everyone. Um, nothing like confusing by having the previous director of finance have the same name as one of my introductions this evening. So first, I want to introduce Don Wynott. Um, Don joined us as a customer service representative back in April of 2021. So a little while ago, she's here almost a year now. Um, Dawn came to us with over 30 years of experience as a senior administrative assistant with a large accounting firm, and her experience with customer service has been a great asset to the town. Dawn's available to assist customers with payments, both in person and over the phone, um, parking permits, tax and water bills, dog tags, purchase of green bins, parking permits, and directing general inquiries uh, to the correct department for assistance. So we just wanted to give Dawn a warm welcome, even though we welcomed her also about nine months ago. Welcome, Dawn. Glad to have you. Thank you very much. It's been, it's been good so far. I'm enjoying it and 
do a little bit of everything, as you heard. So if you need it, I can figure out how to get it for you. That's great. All right. And so I have a second introduction. And so we'd also like to welcome Angela Smith. Angela has joined us in the role of customer service representative on a casual basis back in December of 2021, so just recently. Angela has more than 25 years of experience ranging from customer service, accounting, and administrative assistance experience in the area of banking and with the largest utility in Nova Scotia. Angela and her husband have recently moved to Bridgewater, and they are excited to learn more about the area. So welcome to the town, Angela. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. Um, reach out to Don and the rest of the finance team. I have lots of questions and I'm learning a lot, but um, everything's going great. Thanks very much. Hey, welcome to the team. Thanks. Okay, so um, Jessica, I believe, is here and she'll introduce Haruka and Adrian with Energize Bridgewater and Mike with um, Community Development. Great, thank you very much. Uh, it's with great pleasure that I wanted to introduce Haruka Eoama, who will be joining the Energized Bridgewater team as a policy analyst. So she'll be working on the, the Energized Bridgewater program research, design evaluation activities, um, smart cities policy, data governance and privacy, and a whole range of things related to the smart cities project. Uh, to make our energy poverty reduction program successful. So Haruka earned her bachelor's degree with honors from Dalhousie University in 2020 and has been gaining experience in the municipal and climate change sectors. And she uh, came to us from Halifax Regional Municipality where she'd been working as a legislative assistant. Um, she's also worked on some independently on some public consultation processes related to the Nova Scotia Sustainable Development Goals Act and served as a youth delegate on national and international initiatives related to sustainability and international cooperation. And Haruka is from Okayama, Japan, and came to Canada in 2016. And she lived in Halifax for five years and is really excited to start uh, living, well, she's moved here to Bridgewater and excited to explore, and we're really thrilled to have her join our team. Welcome, Haruka. Thank you so much, good to be here. All right, next I'd like to call upon Adrian Lamb. Adrian just joined us as a IT and data science analyst uh, with the Energize Bridgewater team, and he's helping to develop and launch the energy management information system component to the energy poverty reduction program. So that's what are we doing with all of the, the data we'll be, we'll be gathering and how are we going to transform that data into information that, that residents can use to uh, further improve the energy efficiency of their homes. Um, Adrian earned a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of California at Davis in 2021, majoring in applied physics and materials sciences and minoring in computer science and working with Python code, which is not a language I can speak, um, but he is here to speak it with us, which is really wonderful. So uh, he has also moved to Bridgewater, uh, never having been to uh, the South Shore or Nova Scotia before. So it's really wonderful to have Adrian joining our team. Adrian, welcome. Hi, thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks. And last but not least, I would like to introduce Mike Kahn. He has joined the community development team as another plan or two. Uh, Mackenzie is also at your meeting tonight. She <laughs> has a plan or two, so Mackenzie hasn't gone anywhere. Mike is joining the team. We've grown a bit. Uh, and he will be responsible for leading the review of the town's planning documents, as well as uh, helping with development applications and other projects based on council's strategic priorities. Mike is originally from uh, Southern Ontario, and he graduated from the University of Waterloo with a degree in environmental studies uh, planning in 2007, and then went out west to Fort Mac and uh, worked with the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo um, in Alberta and as a planner. And then he was specifically looking at growth pressures and socioeconomic impacts of the oil sands. And then he went and attended Dalhousie for his Master's of Public Administration and uh, then made his way back to Alberta where he was working as a planner with the Provincial Department of Municipal Affairs, working on intermunicipal relations and affordable housing. And uh, Mike and his partner own a home in Shelburne, and so he's really thrilled to have been able to make his way back to Nova Scotia uh, to start his life here with his partner. 
and uh, we're really thrilled to have him join our team as well. It's been busy. Yeah, welcome, Mike. Good to meet everybody. Great additions to our town of Bridgewater team. Oh, excited. Thanks. Excited for the future. Thank you to our management team for introducing all our new staff. Uh, moving on, uh, we don't have any delegations lined up for today, so uh, we'll move on to the minutes of January 10th, 2022 regular council meeting. Any errors or omissions with those? Hearing none, a motion to approve the minutes as circulated, please. So moved. Deputy Mayor Tanner, seconded by Councillor Caldwell. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Hearing none, minutes are approved. And we're just going to kind of reorder uh, one item. Um, so down to business rising and unfinished business, the uh, bus stop improvement plan. We'll move that up to um, now, if we could. And I'll turn that over to, uh, I believe, Mr. Davidson and Ms. Childs are running through this one, or at least Matt is. Thank you very much for allowing it to be bumped up. Just to have a, a volunteer thing I need to get to uh, be prior to seven o'clock. So um, thank you. I'm here this evening with Mackenzie uh, to follow up on the December 6th discussion session uh, where we uh, inter first introduced our bus drop improvement plan. At that meeting, we kind of uh, we reviewed what initiated the discussion around bus stop improvements, which was actually uh, back as a, a proposal uh, proposed from a, a local company to do donate a U shelter. And at that time, we really didn't have the an improvement plan in place, nor did we actually have it covered under the donation policy. So staff thought it best to, to touch base with council on what their wishes were at that time. Uh, since then, we've reviewed all 25 stops just from a basic understanding of how they're used, what amenities are needed, uh, the general understanding of what the best practices are around uh, bus stops. Um, we rank them in terms of priority, estimated cost, and scheduled complete. Uh, we should note that the, the plan is not set in stone, the proposed plan is not set in stone. Uh, as more information comes to light or other projects come to light, we can certainly alter, we hope. One area that does need to give, uh, we do need to give more attention to is accessibility. And, and thankfully, uh, the uh, accessibility coordinator from Ms. Pally of Chester has graciously offered to provide us some assistance there. Um, so at this time, uh, the, really the focus in the short term is on landing pads and, and uh, maybe the installation of a bench and the shelter. Uh, the plans don't really look at lighting at this point um, because we need to look at more, do some more research there. Uh, also should, should note that the improvement plan, while focused on the bus stops, we know that there are other projects which we could piggyback on, like sidewalk improvements uh, that, uh, that some of the work could be done through. Um, the anticipate that the improvement plan would be funded, uh, hopefully fully funded through the Public Transit Assistance Program or PTAP, which is an annual grant we receive, uh, approximately $25,000 per year. And we've successfully received it, I believe, since the transit system uh, was initiated. Um, and currently those reserves stand at around just under $50,000. Uh, staff developed a 10-year plan, uh, which is attached to the council document. Um, I know I understand the council uh, has a desire to install a shelter uh, more probably a little bit quicker than staff are suggesting. Uh, so um, looking hopefully we can complete the research on the shelters to see what is best suited to Bridgewater and hopefully bump that up a year. Uh, but we do need a little bit more time to find out what kind of suits our suits our needs. Uh, so really at, at this time we're looking for council to uh, give us an endorsement of the plan that way we can get to do some more work on it and direct staff with the next steps uh, such as exploring partnerships and creating and updating any necessary po policies to execute exploring funding any ad other options of funding to offset costs including the the plan proposed plan in the 10-year capital plan which we're going we're actually discussing now i guess and uh, continue to maintain the plan for future inclusion Hopefully that was short enough. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, questions from council uh, on the on the documents that were attached or the plan. Yeah, we kind of went through this as we were getting introduced to the capital plan. Um, my question would be: uh, I know that we use the PTAP funding. Is the the announcement from the feds last year on um, kind of new streams of, of transit funding. 
Does that help us at all? Or is that for operating or is that just for vehicles? Do we know? I personally don't know, but I'm sure or Allison uh, could probably help us research what is uh, what those new funds uh, would include and what's required to to access them. OK, yeah, yeah we'll check that out. Sorry, Timmy, you were going to say? I was going to say, I get Allison would have the details on the, on the, the fund itself, and she is aware of our capital projects and tries to align them. Uh, I know we are tapping into some of that uh, funding for a feasibility study, too. We made an application for a feasibility study to look at um, exploring, um, expanding transit throughout the town. So. Okay. I know that, like, previous federal money, we were kind of locked out just based on the agreement the feds and the province signed. My understanding was this new stream of funding would kind of avoid that, but I don't know if I don't know where it fits. So um, I'd just be curious I mean, in the future. We I'm under the impression there's a few, yeah, there's a few streams happening right now. One more for um, kind of operations and studies, and then the other one is for capital projects. So it hasn't opened up yet, I don't think, um, but that's something that should be happening soon. So we've got our eye on that. Great, thank you. Councillor Caldwell. Um, just to piggyback on the, the concept of the feasibility for uh, expanding transit service, will we be mindful of um, the existing sites? Um, if we do work on existing sites, that they won't potentially be moved following a feasibility, feasibility study? Certainly, uh, we will be mindful and some of the stops that we part of the reason why we don't want to invest too much. Uh, we want to do the low hanging fruit in the first couple of years and some of the other stops that are being suggested, I think, uh, wouldn't change because of their necessity uh, from the uh, traveling public. So uh, things like the Des Brise, the professional center, the hospital, those should really be carved in stone. Other questions from council? Would you like a motion? I, I would. Thank you, Councilor. I would move that Council of the Town of Bridgewater approve the bus stop improvement plan as presented in document 20-130B and direct staff to proceed with the next steps as outlined in the report, including incorporation of a 10-year capital plan, maintenance of the document for annual work and budget planning. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Caldwell, other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck, Good luck with your volunteer event. <laughs> yeah, it's just for coaching hockey. <laughs> oh, it's important. Yeah, thank you. Um, down to correspondence for action. We've got uh, a couple of um, letters from the Anti-Racism Task Force. So the first letter is uh, from the chair, uh, Patricia Watson, and the, and the task force itself. Um, most of this is an introduction of the task force to, to committees. Um, so this went out to, uh, to all the committees uh, that are part of the town. And just kind of as an introduction, who we are, um, the role, and uh, essentially just saying we're we're here for um, uh, you know, questions. We're here to help with with issues that may come up, and uh, and so as this kind of progresses, uh, we'll be we'll be more involved with them and and doing more uh, in terms of policy review and things like that. But the more and more will come from that. As I said, uh, the chairs of I believe all the town committees should have also received this letter now. And if there's any questions, you can certainly uh, to reach out to Mrs. Watson, whose uh, email address is on the bottom there as part of the Anti-Racism Task Force. The next item uh, is again from the Anti-Racism Task Force and is a request to hire a coordinator. Um, so I can just share as a member of the Anti-Racism Task Force that uh, one of the things that we've learned is that this is raining work, um, especially for members of the task force who are also dealing with um, issues of racism in their own lives, to then have to also deal with issues of racism in the community. It becomes emotionally draining, um, exhausting, and uh, in some in some times it's become um, triggering and very uh, very difficult. And so the committee. 
um, kind of worked through this and, and the end result was that really having someone who's a professional staff person trained in how to deal with issues of racism um, would be the best case forward, the best way forward. Otherwise, we're going to um, uh, really struggle with volunteers who, again, are going to um, feel that this is a bit too much. But further to that, recognizing that racism obviously doesn't stop at town lines or county lines. And so the idea of sharing a, um, a race, anti-racism and inclusion coordinator with the other four municipal units in the region, similar to accessibility coordinator and other positions that we already share, um, was seen as the best approach. So attached is uh, that request asking town council um, to consider putting uh, this position in our 2022-23 budget. And this letter has also gone out to municipality district Lunenburg, town of Mahone Bay, town of Lunenburg, and um, the uh, district of uh, Chester. So that's there. I don't know if I can, I can certainly answer any questions if people have any. I'm sure the CAO can. Councillor Thorburn. Yes, Your Worship. Uh would that be somewhere along the lines of the other committee that we just tie it for, whether it be uh, spend so much time in Bridgewater, or how is that going to work out? We would we would work out those details under a, under an agreement between the municipal units, but that seems to be the model that works the best, where you you kind of look at so many so many hours in each municipal unit and you fund it. Uh, the funding formula would either be assessment or, you know, like we come up with, we get lots of models to pick from, but the, that the, the structure would be brought back to council along with the terms of reference for the, for the committee that, and how yeah. we'd fund the coordinator. So that would be somewhere along the line as accessibility coordinator is working yeah. now? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Caldwell. Would the, <clears throat> would the idea be that uh, the concept only go forward if we had all the local municipalities on board? Um, well, that, that ultimately becomes a decision of council. So if, if none of the other communities, for example, wanted to go forward, then, then council could say, well, we feel this is important enough to hire someone. Um, early indications are that uh, we're not, a, you know, there's more than one municipality currently interested in this. Um, so whether it's one, two, or five, I don't know, but that would that decision would have to come back to us um, for sure. Councilor McDonald. Can you give us an idea of what kind of um, activities the, the committee has been working on or if there's uh, maybe not necessarily strategic plan, but goals that you're working towards this year that the coordinator yeah, so, can be part of? Yeah, so... Um, We've worked on some, we looked at some policies. We've worked with the LCLC on some issues that were there. Um, so if you go to the LCLC now, you'll see, um, I don't want the code of conduct isn't, isn't really the correct term. Deputy Mayor, you can kind of clarify. You were still chair when that came out, but um, some items there. Um, they're working on the Cornwallis Street renaming. Um, and I'm just trying to think of where else we are now. We're working on training. So, um, anti-racism training with the LCLC and other municipalities. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Is someone prepared to make a motion? Councillor Vergeer? Motion, yes. Um, make a motion that Council for the Town of Bridgewater uh, refer the quest Right. Refer the request from the Anti-Racism Task Force to hire an anti-racism and inclusion coordinator shared with other municipal units to hire, uh, sorry, units to the 2022-23 budget deliberations. Thank you. Seconded by? I'll second that, Your Worship. Councilor Thorburn, thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you. And I should just clarify for the public when, because now we're in budget season. So when we refer things to the budget deliberations, it does not mean that these things have passed yet. It means that they're going to be in the budget and then they'll be part of that package. Um, I know from time to time, 
it gets confusing in January, February, as we uh, refer a lot of things to budget. Um, just want to remind people that um, as that happens, it does not mean they've passed until the budget is passed, provided those things remain in the budget. Uh, down to reports and recommendations, we have the Lindbergh County Senior Safety Program a monthly report for December 2021. I know I sound like a broken record when I keep saying that uh, this is an incredibly valuable program, uh, and I don't know how they do it with the resources they have. Um, I would encourage the community to educate themselves on what these uh, what these individuals do, because they're doing a lot of heavy lifting. Um, Next, we have 10.2 award of RFP 2021-15. Um, and I don't know who we have, who's gonna lead that one. So Andy, I think, I don't know if Andy's here. Yep, I, see sure Andy, yep. I just remind, Andy's gonna kind of explain the review of the RFP. I will remind council that this is one that uh, we had actually um, the deputy, the chief and the deputy chief had come to uh, council and asked for agreement to exceed the a budget amount, uh, indicating that the fire department had funds that they could uh, complement our budget with in order to to purchase the equipment. Because based on their research, they anticipated that the the, the uh, prices that came in would be over the budgeted amount that we budgeted, and that in fact was the case. So. Uh, from the report, you can see that they had one one submission, and in fact, it was over the fifty thousand dollars that we had budgeted. And the council did agree to to consider that. So, Andy, you don't want to explain the tender? Not a problem. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, we've yes, uh, we had one um, reply back to our tender. Uh, on uh, and uh, basically what we did is uh, we reviewed the tools that were submitted and uh, everything that was uh, submitted by uh, uh, the proponent uh, met the requirement that we were looking at. It was actually one of the uh, proponents that we had uh, demoed the tools beforehand. So we were familiar with the tools and uh, equipment that they had uh, submitted. Um, uh, we knew that going into this, we knew that the tools were going to be over budget and uh, the fire department itself was uh, willing to put money into the additional, into the addition um, expenditure. And uh, um, basically the capital budget for this year uh, was $52,000. Uh, the total um, with full HST was 69,462. Uh, basically, it's over the uh, bud budget amount and the fire department would be willing to put uh, uh, 10,943.96 into um, the equipment account to ensure that uh, the town of Bridgewater uh, came in at budget. And these are uh, extra extrication, extrication <laughs> tools, extrication vehicle, tools, so vehicle extrication tools. Yeah, uh, and, so the, and batter, battery powered. Yeah, so basically, what this does is uh, currently the Bridgewater Fire Department has uh, corded tools. Uh, so basically, it's no, it's uh, si uh, similar again to to uh, uh, corded skill saw. Uh, what this allows us to do would be to go further away from the vehicle. Our uh, uh, vehicle right now has a 100-foot cable on it, and that is the maximum length that we're allowed to go away from the vehicle. And uh, uh, this will allow us to go further away from the vehicle uh, and still maintain the structural requirements that we are required uh, to uh, work on these vehicles. As you folks know, with the types of vehicles that we're getting now, they're getting stronger. Uh, people are surviving more. Volvo has just made a mandate that uh, starting in a couple of years, they want zero people to be injured or killed in their vehicles going forward. That's quite a mandate. So having figured that out, these tools uh, will help uh, Bridgewater uh, ensure that uh, the vehicle uh, can be removed from uh, the patient. So just just because I'm curious, so if if there was a car that was like way off the road, mm -hmm. was the, was there is there a scenario currently where you might not be able to get to them with the tools that you have because they're so far, like if they were down a ravine or something? 
Correct, correct. So uh, with our current uh, Rescue 5 that we have now, uh, we have, like I said, a 100-foot cable on the, on the truck that when it fully extends out, it'll get to about 100 feet away from the vehicle. We do have a 30-foot extension that we could add to the hose, but it diminishes the capability because this is a runoff of hydraulic pressure, okay? When the hydraulic pressure is uh, run through the machines, the longer you put the hose out, the weaker the tool becomes. What happens with these electric, you know, electric battery operated tools is they become their own independent hydraulic pump right where you are. So we could take, uh, um, for example, uh, we could take uh, a, corded, a cordless vehicle extrication tool uh, into the woods up behind uh, Parkview on the water side and get to the water where before with our rescue five we wouldn't be able to do that we would get to the end of the 100 feet and you'd be somewhere in the pine trees and that would be it so yeah and uh, where we were uh, had proposals in to ask for a battery operated cutter uh, a ram, which is basically a telescopic ram that extends out, a uh, battery-operated uh, combination tool, which is basically uh, a cutter as well as a spreader, and uh, uh, a battery-operated spreader. So it was four tools that we were looking for. Great. Thank you. No problem. I found that quite fascinating. Are there questions from Council? Council Thorburn. Yes, Andy, how many tender patches was, was picked up? Because we only had one reply to it. It kind of seems strange. We only had one reply. Yes, we had uh, four uh, that I know have have been sent out. Uh, two um, tender packages um, were uh, shipped in. Um, how, how can I say that? One tender package was called into the town of Bridgewater, and because the town of Bridgewater does not accept at this time uh, email tenders, it has to come in via courier, via mail, hand delivery, that type of thing. Uh, so that was excluded. Um, another one, um, which is an absolute shame, um, the other proponent that we were looking forward to getting uh, a quote back on uh, they uh, shipped it from Ontario on Monday through Pure Later Courier, and Pure Later Courier shipped it to Bridgewater on the day of the um, tender opening at 9 o'clock and did not deliver it until way at the next morning or the next day. So it was a, a courier issue. Uh, another proponent uh, had called in and said that they were not able to meet the requirements that we had set in the uh, tender package itself. That, that's a shame. Maybe we should look at some of our policies that we can take emails. It would make it a lot easier uh, for people trying to get things in on time in this day and age. Anyway, thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. Not, not a problem. See you. Yeah, just just on that point about uh, taking emails, it's it, the confidentiality of the of the submission needs to be maintained, and that's why we require them in sealed, so no one sees the price until the day of opening, um, because it can compromise um, the secrecy of the bid. So there is software that we're going to be exploring. You'll see it in the budget this year that we're we're looking at exploring and purchasing that will enable us to accept online submissions like electronically, so that. Um, we can, uh, COVID kind of brought that to light that we really need to kind of go in that direction. Great. Thanks, Tammy. Appreciate it. Uh, Councilor McDonald. Just out of curiosity, what is the life expectancy on a piece of equipment like this? The corded vehicle extrication tools that we have uh, currently, uh, this is our, I believe it's fourth set. And uh, we have a set of tools that we're uh, deemed uh, surplus, and those tools are well over 30 years old. Uh, the tools that we have uh, that we have on the truck now are approximately 10 years old, and are like new. They've been used a lot, abused quite frequently. And uh, if you know a firefighter, uh, we like to break things and uh, find it very hard to break them. Um, 
the tools that we're proposing to you tonight uh, come with a lifetime warranty. So as long as the town of Bridgewater owns them, they have a lifetime warranty. And of course, there's all kinds of little caveats, but yes. Excellent. Deputy Mayor Tanner. So just to be clear, Andy, this includes all the provisional items? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, okay. It does. And is there... And is there any chance to uh, sell the equipment we do have to another department? Yes, currently we are in uh, negotiations with another department. So as soon as uh, Council for the Town of Bridgewater agrees to purchase the new set, uh, our old set of tools will be uh, sold. Uh, we currently have two sets of tools, um, two sets of corded hearse tools, and we're going to be selling the older set and uh, recouping some of the money. Uh, from this and uh, uh, basically uh, it will be going to another department that we work closely with as well. So you said two sets. What's what's yes. going on with the second set? So the second set of tools is uh, going to be kept on the truck and used as a backup. It's quite frequent and quite often that we use two sets of tools on a call. Um, uh, I'll give you a scenario we had uh, a couple years ago. We had uh, uh, three or four car pile up uh, downtown King Street, and uh, we used both sets of tools and uh, was in the process of going to call in uh, another mutual aid department for another set when uh, um, we were able to secure the vehicle. Uh, recently, we had another car accident uh, on the road to Parkview, King Street and uh, two vehicles both sets of tools were in use so what we're going to do is we're going to keep we're going to sell one set of tools and we're going to keep the other set of tools as backup for just in case okay, okay thank you other questions is someone prepared to make an oh cats for here yeah we have a question yeah um i just had a question because like as the deputy chief has indicated, like the capital project was budgeted for X dollars. However, the uh, fire department has agreed to contribute the overage. Um, I'm just wondering about like, as far as the motion is concerned, is there anything uh, that clarifies um, that they'll be contributing uh, dollars to the uh, over the <laughs> Set amount that was uh, set aside, like there's a budget for the capital project. I know um, this was kind of similar to um, uh, the boat that we purchased uh, for the fire department, and there was, I remember, sort of example of the motion that we made. I'll let the CAO address yeah, that. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you can. Um, we are still working on the the whole the fire department is really a department of the town and it's technically okay. town funds but um if it if it brings comfort we can have that the um the difference between the budget amount and the award amount uh, shall be funded through fire department funds okay and and then we're, we'll be uh, we know how to find them we'll we'll, we'll make sure we get that difference okay. council thurman Yes, Your Worship. I, I did make a motion a couple of months back when you brought that to a discussion session, actually come to council because he was going to pay the overreach and I made a motion that they would be allowed to pay the difference between what the tender price was and what the actual cost was. That motion is already on the book, so I really don't think you need anything else because we already have that motion before they actually put the order in. Is that correct, Andy? Yes, it is. Yeah, so and I'm just getting confirmation too that we, we already, we do have a motion on the books about that. So hopefully, uh, to Council Bridger's point, hopefully that clarifies that. Um, and then we do need to work through the process of the fire department and department of town, um, but we'll get through that. Other questions from council? Someone prepared to put a motion on the floor? Councilor McDonald, please and thank you. Sure, just getting to my motions here. Sorry, I'm slow. 
I would move that Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater Award RFP 2021-15 to Safety Source Fire Incorporated with the indicated provisional items as presented in document 21-187 at a cost of $69,410.62 full HST, $62,943.96 net HST. Thank you. Seconded by. I'll second that. See, see Deputy Mayor. We've had a good discussion. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Thank you, Mayor. And I just want to extend uh, thank you from the fire department and uh, and also an invitation once the weather clears up and gets a little nicer uh, that uh, all council come up and we'll uh, show you what they what they work like. We'll open up uh, Council Thorwood's truck. <laughs> Make it a convertible. Yeah, there we go. The date. Thank you. Uh, Ten point three is donations. Um, we had a request from the Bridgewater Curling Club through our designated community project fund. Um, so there's that request there. I see our director of finance it's popped on the screen. I don't know if it's for this item. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, did you want to add to that? Um, nope, I can just answer any questions that you might have. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, the project uh, has come before council before, and so the amount is $4,250 for the repairs to their facility. I don't know if anyone had questions on that. Would you like if a motion? Not, yes, please. I move that council approve a grant in the amount of $4,250 to the Bridgewater Curling Club for repairs to their facility in accordance with policy 97, designated community project fund. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Caldwell. Further discussion? And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, now down to 11.1, .1, new and amended policies, um, debt reserves, investment tax, collection, purchasing, and tendering. So we gave notice at the last meeting, I believe, for this item. And so I'll turn this over to our director of finance to maybe just refresh everyone's memories and whatever you had for a presentation. Sure. So I'll just go through some of the highlights of the policy. So there's a number of them based on, on the list. Um, so I'll just start with the first one. So there is a debt policy. This is a brand new policy. The town didn't have one um, prior to this. And given our 10-year capital plan and our forecasted debt affordability model, it's probably seems timely to actually have a policy in place. And the policy just specifies some things that are kind of come from different places already. And so part of that would be that we have a 10-year capital plan and we use the debt affordability model when determining our debt service ratio that um, Department of Municipal Affairs as well as MFC limit us to 30% of our uh, revenue um, to service our debt. So they would not let us borrow in excess of 30%, but also that council's objective is to try to keep that below 15%. We can certainly borrow over 15%, but that's the kind of magic number we'd like to stay below. It is low risk but there are times where we may need to exceed that. In addition, when we borrow from MFC, we can borrow um, under terms of five, 10, 15, or 20 years. Typically we borrow, um, in, historically we have borrowed over 10 years, um, but with some of the wastewater, which have really extended lifespans, we've actually um, moved up to recommending 15 years at times. But we would, um, I guess reserve 20 year term debt for kind of exceptional circumstances. That's not a, a recommended term that we would normally use. And that's specified in the in the policy for that as well. So that's kind of the highlights of it. Um, as I said, it's more getting in line with some of the regulations that we're following, but actually puts it in there to guide staff and council when making um, capital budget decisions, for example. The next one would be reserve policy. So we historically have had a reserve policy, um, but it was very basic. And so 
the new reserve policy is more, um, I guess, a guideline in setting up reserves. Um, there's been a number of reserve policies over the years and then reserve funds held within reserves. So for example, the operating reserve might have money set it, designated for 20 different projects within side of it. So what the policy does is sets out a, a framework. So if staff or council want to have a reserve set aside for something, we would actually complete a business case for that reserve and get that approved. That actually allows for better long-term tracking of the reserve, the purpose for the reserve, maybe the timeline of the reserve if it was for a specific project, just so that, you know, for example, um, if $10,000 was put in reserve for a specific project and it all was used except for $300, that that $300 wouldn't be carried forward in perpetuity. It would kind of have an end date. Um, the policy also permits um, the director of finance to review the list annually and make recommendations to council to transfer a reserve either, you know, the balance into another reserve fund or back to operations and things like that. So um, just requires us to regularly follow up on that. And that would be applicable to operating and capital reserves. So in addition to the general reserve policy, we've added specifically an operating reserve policy and a capital reserve policy. And the, the couple of things about that would be um, that interest would be retained within those reserves. So inter any interest or investment income earned on those reserves will be retained in those reserves unless council made a specific motion to use that interest income um, for operations or for capital. Um, and that would either be through a separate motion or through the budgeting process. However, currently right now, all the interest income earned on reserve funds is transferred to operating and used. Um, for the operating budget. In addition to that, we've actually set targets for those reserve funds. So, for example, the operating reserve, um, I guess, MS or Department of Municipal Affairs calculates on an annual basis um, some financial condition indicators. So, as part of that, they've determined that 20% would be considered low risk for operating reserve balance. Um, and the town's reserve fund, operating reserve fund balance exceeds that right now. So we just like to make sure that, I guess, staff are recommending that we indicate 20% as kind of a minimum for the operating reserve. There may be times when council needs to go below that, but it is a recommended target because it is um, kind of considered low risk. Anything we have above that is is great and part of our long-term um, capital funding and, and savings for a rainy day. On the capital reserve side, our capital reserve is not quite as healthy as our operating reserve. And so we're recommending that a minimum of 10% of operating expenses and amortization be held in the capital reserve. Most of the time, things being put in the capital reserve are things that are specifically required under the MGA. So the MGA indicates if we sell assets or if we sell land, things like that, we have to put the proceeds of those into the capital reserve. So currently, that's mainly what's funding our capital reserve, which is why it doesn't have a significant balance. Some of the, I guess, things that go with the capital reserve are what we can use it for. So the MGA also says not only what can, has to go in there, but also what we can use it for. So we can only use it for capital projects, repayment of capital debt, and landfill closure costs. So it is a little more limiting than the operating reserve, which has more flexibility to fund both operating and capital items. So that's the kind of the summary of the of the reserves. Um, the other new policy would be the investment policy. Also, historically, the town has not had an investment policy to guide staff for investing, and that's resulted in us either holding CAF or GICs. Also, in the past, GICs were, were not problematic in that they had a, a reasonable rate of return. But in the last couple of years, we've gotten to the point where GIC rate of return is actually less than what we can earn on our checking account with our bank. So it's not ideal. So the new investment policy sets out guidelines. We worked um, both through an AMAN template as well as guidance provided by a national investment firm that provided us with their template they use for their municipal clients. 
and we were able to put together some guidelines for both staff and any investment advisors we would use in the future. And so it really um, starts at the beginning of that investment policy where other than um, a couple of legal stipulations really talks about the protection of the capital of the investment. So we wouldn't want um, anyone investing town funds in things where we couldn't protect the principal balance of our investment. So we could have a higher return than GICs, for example, but that we wouldn't be buying um, risky stocks. So it provides that guidance. The next policy um, or the next couple policies are really just housekeeping items. So the tax collection policy amendments really just um, put into policy what we're actually doing. So for example, if there were um, a bankruptcy or property valuation services corporation gives us an adjustment to to someone's taxes, if we were to have to adjust um, their tax bill or their interest because of those adjustments, um, we just need to provide staff with the authority to to make those changes. We wouldn't obviously want to bring uh, bankruptcies and things like that um, through to council for approval. Um, and then also um, just provides the treasurer with the ability to set tax sale dates without um, bringing those to council. And that came to light um, last year when we had to postpone due to COVID and we had came to council to get that date postponed. It would just give staff a little more flexibility in establishing that date. And the last one, the purchasing and tendering policy, it was actually um, brought into um, place a number of years ago. However, it just um, omitted to repeal the previous tendering procedures policy that was in place. So we just added um, the repeal to the bottom of our existing policy 79. So that is everything that I had um, prepared on the policies. I'm not sure if there are any questions. Uh, and Kim, just for clarification, and I think you raised this before, we have struck a purchasing and tendering committee to start updating those policies as well? Yes. So this is the purchasing um, and tendering policy 79 that we currently have. While we're just asking for a small housekeeping um, to be addressed here, we actually have a staff committee that will be um, working on our on our policy and updates we might need to address things such as um, addressing electric vehicles and how we evaluate that against other types of vehicles. For example, um, we are also, as uh, the CAO mentioned, we're looking at purchasing um, tendering software allows us to accept electronic bids. And so we have a number of things on the go with that purchasing and tendering policy, but we will hope to update that um, to be um, a little bit better at guiding staff when making those decisions. Thank you. Questions from members of council? These items. No, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The presentation was quite quite to the point. Um, is someone, there's five motions in here. We'll deal with them, tackle them in, individually, uh, obviously. Is someone prepared to make a motion on the debt management policy? Council Fajir. Yes, Your Worship. I move that Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater approve the debt management policy as presented in document 21-187 as policy 105 for the town effective immediately. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Coughlin. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you. Our next one is the uh, capital reserve policy uh, and operating reserve policy. Um, just before we make a motion, any final questions on that one? Hearing none, is someone prepared to make a motion? Councilor Pajir again, please. Okay. Um, yes, Your Worship, that Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater approved the capital reserve policy as policy 107 for the town. The operating reserve policy is policy 108 for the town and revised policy 21 reserve funds as presented in document 21-187 and further that policy 76 snow clearing reserves 83 reserve for liability claims and 95 wastewater reserve 
be repealed all effective immediately. Thank you. Seconded by. Second that. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Questions? Hearing none, everyone please, in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Hearing none, motion is carried. Um, can I please have someone make a motion to approve the investment policy? Councilor Brazier, you're on a roll. All right, on a roll. Yes, uh, the Town Council for the Town of Bridgewater approved the investment policy as presented in document 21-187 as policy 108 for the town effective immediately. Thank you. Seconded by? I'll do that, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Thurward. Questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. Our fourth motion is the tax collection policy. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, yes, the town council for the town of Bridgewater approved the revised policy 33 tax collection as presented in document 21-1187 effective immediately. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Caldwell. Any further questions on that one? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Hearing none, motion is carried. And the final motion for this topic. Uh, oh, Councilor Call had his hand up first. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> I had to get in there quick. I, I thought Cheryl <laughs> needed, a, needed a break. <laughs> Move the town council for the town of Bridgewater approve the revised policy 79, purchasing and tendering, and further repeal policy 2, Tendering procedures as presented in document 21 187, effective immediately. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Conklin. Any further debate? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Hopkins. Uh, we already did the bus stop approval plan, so we're down to new business mutual aid fire services agreement. And I'm going to turn it over to the CAO. Okay, um, so this uh, agreement is one that's been presented to the town. Um, uh, District of Lunenburg's fire service coordinator presented it to us, but as you can see, it has all of the fire departments, I believe all the fire departments within, within, the, within the region. So it includes the District of Lunenburg, Town of Lunenburg, um, District 1, and um, yeah, and uh, Mahone Bay, I believe, is in here as well. Yeah. And uh, this here sets out how mutual aid would work, the protocols, like kind of like the who you call first and what what chain that kind of um, what's the next step within that process that would, would be triggered by that call and just an agreement by all fire departments that this, in fact, is the process that would be followed. Uh, Andy can speak to it in more detail. I think he's still here. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Um, if if you have any questions, I can confirm that legal counsel has reviewed uh, this agreement and um, helped prepare it. So there's no concerns from a legal perspective. Um, so it's pretty basic. And as they say, it just kind of sets out the protocols that would be followed if, if fire departments were called upon in an event of a, an emergency. Thank you. And are there any questions from Council? Councilor Thorburn. Just one, Andy. Is Miss Pally District of Chester, those five departments in that as well? Because we did have Chester and those departments in, in to help us different times in Bridgewater. Or is that just Lundberg without Chester? This is just municipality uh, or the municipality of Lundberg uh, without municipality district of Chester. Uh, so it's basically everything west of the line. So okay. I'm, I'm probably pretty certain that they will be brought online uh, with a new mutual aid agreement uh, between municipality Lunenburg and municipality Chester as well. Yeah, I'm we hopeful. used to have the, the old social and mutual aid, but that's been years ago. <laughs> so yeah. it'd be great to have them on the same document at some point in time. Thanks. 100%. Any other questions on this item? Hearing none, is someone prepared to make a motion? I will, Your Worship. Thank you. 
I would move that Council for the Town of Bridgewater authorize the execution of the mutual aid fire service agreement as presented in document 22-003. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor McDonald. Any further discussion? Certainly no debate in the value of mutual aid. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, we're down to item 12.2, capital budget. Oh, over to CAO okay. this one. Yep. So um, with the agenda, you have uh, the capital budget that's been revised as well as uh, the requested traffic light upgrade plan. So you can see when the um, uh, signals are planned to be upgraded um, through various intersections in the town over the next several years. So there, there, there were a few questions that were raised during our last budget meeting um, that you can see the adjustments within the budget. Uh, the Glen Allen sidewalk was one, and you can see that we've changed that to 85,000. Um, here, Council was uh, deliberating between whether or not to replace the parking on the hospital side of Glen Allen um, Drive with uh, six spaces on the opposite side of the road that would lead to the park. And there was question about whether or not the sidewalk would extend, that would be installed, would extend up to the park into Glen Allen Park entrance. And staff have confirmed that in fact, the 85,000 did include the six park installed, plus the sidewalk that would go up to the park entrance. So that staff's understanding is that was council's uh, primary concern was ensuring that 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 wouldn't kind of stop short of the park entrance. So that's been confirmed. So the number's been reduced to 85 and the budget you had seen last week, it was 170. Pearl Street was taken out. Um, we advised council that there was still construction activity that could be anticipated this construction season. So we would save the paving of that until the following year instead of having to redo stuff. And in the future capital plans, there is a question asked about Empire, the work on Empire and whether or not um, we could kind of do that work back to back instead of splitting it, you know, putting a gap of a couple of fiscal years in between. So the, the budget, the long range capital plan has been adjusted to show that um, that work being done back to back. And pavement ma management, there was a question about basically how how high can we go with the resources that we have and anticipate that we would you know expect to see the budget utilized and you know without there could be some unforeseen circumstances that come up that get in the way but um what staff have advised is that the pavement management could go up to 600,000 plus you have 200 within your operating budget normally as well so that'd be 800,000 in pavement management total with 600 in capital and sidewalk management would be at 150,000 and uh, they felt that they could they could um, do that um, with, the, with those amounts and the resources that are being proposed. Um, we, in the operating budget, we are um, going to bring, be bringing forward some increases to staff resources in the public works area, and that would that would help with the capital court list and stuff like that that we have ongoing. But this is based on um, the, the resources that we have today. So those adjustments have been made and those are in the capital capital plan. Um, and as I say, the traffic light upgrade um, spreadsheets there as well. There is some PSC stuff there and that's not relevant to tonight. It's more just the, the report on the traffic lights that um, we'll show you when we're proposing to do things. Are there questions on um, either of those? Councilor Thorburn? Not a question, really just a comment, because we're doing two large pavement projects, one on High Street and one on uh, St. Philip Street next year as part of the interchange program for for water. So that will cover a, a couple more large areas of town. Yeah, no, good point. Thanks for calling that out. Uh, Councilor Caldwell. Yes, this um, perhaps some of the councillors who've been on Council a little longer than I have. Um, I already know this, but I'm wondering about. I've uh, been through two budgets, and we've um, sort of tossed around both years, um, increasing the the budget for for paving both years. 
Um, but I'm wondering about, do we have, I mean, it's all sort of what I'm hearing is anecdotal information about the need for paving. Do we have a like a pavement condition index or some tangible information um, that we could see as part of the process to, to understand what what exactly we need for for paving in the town? Yeah, um, yeah, Larry can probably jump in because I know Larry will probably say that we're we need like a million dollars a year just to keep up with it. But Larry, perhaps you can go into a little bit more detail into what those numbers are and and answer that question more directly. Are you able to hear me? Yep. For some reason, I can't seem to see you guys anymore. But anyways, uh, each year we do an assessment in the spring after the winter thaw. And we have, a, a, I guess, a, about a 10-point criteria that we evaluate uh, every street in the town of Bridgewater. And that's how we develop the annual uh, payment management uh, program. Um, we didn't really analyze recently what it would cost, I guess, to um, or, uh, you know, what we should invest annually to redo the streets. But a couple of years ago, we did uh, look at that and I believe the number was about 1.6 million per year if we wanted to work on um, each street uh, in Bridgewater over a 20 year period. So that's probably gone up a bit. Um, I think our, you know, our asset management plan that hopefully we'll bring online in the next little while will also assist, I guess, in determining the value, uh, both the value and the investment of that asset uh, going forward. Does that uh, answer your question, Councillor Caldwell? Yeah. Thank you. Um, it just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak for Councilor Thorburn when I say it just goes to show you that we need to have some kind of agreement with the province because as we sound like a broken record, you know the town has to take care of 100% of its roads, but if you live in a rural municipality, the province takes care of most of those roads, and so um, we're kind of fighting an uphill battle as you can see. If we put $600,000 into our capital and another 200 um, based on other projects we're doing, we're still at you know less than half of what we should be at. Um, but even the lighthouse roof sections of roads in the town of Bridgewater um, are not covered by any kind of uh, any kind of funding. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Uh, just a quick comment on that. We are very hopeful that a strong negotiating team with uh, NSFM working with a service exchange agreement with the province, a renewed service exchange with the province uh, will help with that. So we're we're definitely hopeful there. That'd be great. And we're not obviously alone. Bridgewater is, is facing the same situation as, as every town in the province uh, with the same kind of agreement. So that would be good news. Um, my question um, is really along the lines of um, in the, the traffic like upgrade plan. So first of all, I love this because I know people have been asking, like, when are you going to do the um, do some of the traffic lights, the vehicle detection, of course, like when is that going to change because we know we have a lot of lights that don't the vehicle detection doesn't work so i love to see it kind of mapped out and i think that's important for the public to see it mapped out so they know some are getting done um each year but the one i really that kind of stuck out to me is is la have at aberdeen um where we know that on a friday in the summer cars will be backed up from from the new bridge all the way up silvers hill and i'm just wondering um is that one that we've kind of identified as being able to wait to 25, 26? Is there something, I know when we move one thing around, we have to move other things around, but in the list of priorities on this, um, on this traffic light upgrade schedule, is, is that the best place for it in 25, 26, based on the need for other things? Like how did they get prioritized? I guess that's the easier way to ask my question. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just wondering. Uh, with some of these, it's a matter of what else is going on in town. Uh, I know there's other planned upgrades, and we do look at um, 
I'll say the uh, you know areas that will be disturbed or inconvenienced to the motorists and the traveling public. So we do try to uh, I guess coordinate in that respect. Uh, we don't want to um, you know to have too many areas in one uh, you know local area that that might really cause a lot of congestion. So some of it is that, some of it's funding. Uh, the province is planning to do a bit of work uh, on King Street just north of the bridge. So there's a, a couple of uh, factors, I guess, that go into that timing. It's not to say that, um, you know, we may not be able to move them around a bit, but based on what we know right now with, uh, with other projects, that's what staff feels is the, the best timing. No, that's great. Thank you. I really appreciate that explanation. Makes perfect sense. Thanks. Any other questions on the capital budget or the traffic light upgrade budget? So you know, we will. Be, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Say so we will be um, adding into this so the um, the bus stop improvement plan and, and and those types of things. So this is this will be bringing it back to you at, at another point, probably. Um, to incorporate those things and show you how that looks. It shouldn't make too much of a, a significant difference, but when we have our budget deliberations that I believe are scheduled for the very end of March, beginning of April, we'll have the file for you to, to take a look at. Yep, for sure, thank you. And I know that uh, the folks on School Street will probably welcome the, uh, the note in there about uh, School Street changing the one way uh, in the plan. You know, they've been asking for that for quite a while. Um, as the town gets busier, so that's that's in there. I was, just wanted to kind of note that. Councilor Thorburn, let's see you have your hand up. Yeah, if I read that document correctly, it, it looks like there's a little upgrade to to King and, and Prince Street, where a little piece of Prince Street's going to be one way. Do I read that right? Is that correct, Larry? Well, I think it's just School Street that's going to be. Yeah, I think it's school from King to Prince. Yeah, school from King to Prince. Okay, great. It's not quite the way I read it, but good. Other questions on that? And as CAO said, of course, this is going to come back. So if you have things as you go through it, I know for me, I go through the budget again and again and again in the morning, in the afternoon, different times of day, different light, because uh, things. Um, just like Council Thorwood said, I read things one way and then I go through it again and read it a different way. So um, I know if you have questions or things come up or you have changes that are suggested, just um, just make sure you bring those forward through the CAO. Any other, anything else on the capital budget, the traffic light upgrade? No, okay. Um, well, that is, that brings us to an end of our council meeting. And I know you're all shocked since the last few have been three plus hours, um, but everyone deserves a shorter meeting every now and then. So um, very much appreciate the discussion and staff time and, and welcome again to our new staff. Um, and uh, good luck to all the high school students that start exams this week. Um, we're just, we're rooting for you. So all the best. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Councilor Thorman, seconded by. Second. Deputy Mayor Tanner. Oh, well, it's slow. Nobody wants to leave. <laughs> All right. We do not have an in camera. Uh, so we'll just hang out for Pat to give us the all clear.